don't know how up to date the uh, information I have is, but presumably this would be a first if Sakana gets the dub right here, right now. Always a first time for everything, but off to PS2 with Cola and Sakana. I am wondering how Sakana is going to try and get their openings. I feel like a lot of it will be out of their out of shield pressure, but can't whiff a single grab against Roy. I feel like, especially against a player of Cola's caliber, a single whiff is essentially a death sentence. No, 100%. And uh, especially one thing that you're going to see a lot is this is a very, very violent matchup for both characters. Like, whoever usually gets the first hit can take it for a long time. Sakana hasn't really been able to get any, like, super clean hits yet. He's kind of just getting, like, these little sprays that don't convert to anything. But there's always the distinct possibility that he gets, like, just the right one, and then people just start exploding. But... I mean, similarly, I think part of it is violent because of just the volatility of both of these characters where we've seen Sakana go for some of these like riskier options, whether it's dare or dash attack. And Cola has just been really, really, you know, over overpowering in those situations. Like right now, 97, 103. Yeah, he's, oh, that was such a huge opportunity for Sakana, but he wasn't able to convert sadly for him. And still, I. I Wait. Know, oh, okay. So, yeah, uh, had a little too much dip on his chip. It happens. Yeah, it's just just a little too much. But Sakana just uh, missing the confirm to continue on to Cola. But the get up attack is spaced out, and now two stocks to one. I still agree with you there, uh, you know, Finale Warrior. If Sakana gets one good hit, it could essentially lead to a ton of damage, and already. Two quick interactions in Sakana's favor, 47% off onto Cola. Wait. Here. Yeah, he's able to get that aerial. Now he has to worry about, because ledge trapping is really scary here. Like, Roy genuinely has a hard time getting off ledge against Bowser, but Sakana hasn't really, for the most part, he just hasn't really been able to get those conversions yet. So that's one of the reasons why, even though Sakana's done like all right in neutral, He's just not able to compensate for the fact that he's getting hit so much more and disadvantage. What? Oh, and sent under the stage? I'm still seeing new jank interactions in the year 2024. <laughs> <laughs> and who said this game is solved? No, oh. Sakana's still alive. Bowser's, uh, Bowser's a big boy. It's thick. Oh. oh my god, he's still alive. Still making it back. But... Oh, not a forward throw. I kind of expected a forward throw to reset. Yeah. That, that's such a really bad position to be in. Because yeah. Cola can just easily react to literally anything you do with up air, and it covers all of your options. I think the reason Sakana is like going for those neutral get ups is because those have like the lowest amount of downtime and mm. vulnerability frames where you can do something. So at least you're forcing his timing to be a little bit better mm -hmm. than if he's going to react to another option. So I mentioned you mentioned earlier that Bowser has a uh, pretty good time edge guarding Roy. What what tool should Sakana be leveraging more in that situation? Honestly, just good old fire breath forcing them to have to like reset up B to where you can then get like two frame F tilts is it's so simple, but it's like a really good amount of guaranteed damage that's safe. And then if the up tilt hits, they probably die. No, that makes complete sense to me. But it's a very simple flow chart, but I mean that's just how Bowser works. Oh, no. that's just, all right, so Sakana makes it back. The roll in not enough, and Nicola is just piling on this damage. And I, I lean to your expert opinion on this, but I feel like Sakana is almost just leaning too much into these rolls to try and get behind Cola for a quick grab. But yeah, one hundred percent. That's. You know, the FGT talks a lot about Yomi layers and how there's Yomi 1, Yomi 2. Yeah. That's Yomi 1 for Cola. You've got to be at least at the second or third layer of Yomi to pull that type of stunt on no, him. No, I think the main thing that's going on is, to me, it looks like a symptom of Sakana just not feeling comfortable moving around in neutral right now. And because he's not comfortable, he's kind of just, like, not really trusting his movement as much mm -hmm. as he could. Like, really establishing effective empty movement is the main thing that he needs to be doing that I think will help him in, like, the rest of this game and game three as well and maybe beyond if he's able to start cleaning things up because he's done fine in a lot of scrambles but 
his managing of space outside of those scrambles has gotten him killed a lot. Yeah, completely hear you there. And it's interesting to see how Sakana is trying to at least fight out of the corner where Cola is kind of taking the principle that you were just talking about where not not drifting in, not moving towards Sakana, but occupying a space and then forcing a mistake. And Yeah, he didn't get the F-tilt, but like, there was literally nothing wrong with that like thought process and series of decisions. Like, it didn't work out, but I mean, that's just how it be sometimes. Yeah, it <laughs> just do it again next time. It, the fire breath did exactly what its intended purpose was, which is to create that type of scramble at the edge, but not enough. The back air closes out the stock. Sakana wants to run it back on PS2. No, that's a uh, that's just what most people do when uh, yep. they lose is they just run it back. Yeah. Keep it real simple. I mean, I don't I don't disagree at all. I always like to see a little bit of stage variety, but like you said, keep it simple. If you can just run it back, why not? Uh, I do like how Sakana was at least able to try and get some openings, but good parry. Let's see how Sakana can capitalize. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it looks like they're uh, doing the top 16 loser sets as well. I just heard some of them called in the background. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I don't know how many uh, losers top eight sets or uh, top 12 sets we're going to get. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get like one or two. But we'll see. Well, we'll always have, we're going to have good action regardless on this stream. But I do feel like Sakana has been doing a, oh, just barely with that grab. It was the right idea, wrong direction. Yeah, I think the main thing is once he gets a little more, like right there, he could have gone slain, but he just didn't trust the, he actually got the parry and reacted enough. Like it looks like he's just doubting himself with a lot of his actions. Yeah. You yeah. cannot doubt yourself scrambling against Cola. No, and you I You need to full send everything you do. Yeah, it, against a player of that caliber, I feel like the slightest hint of indecision is like blood in the water to them because they oh, can absolutely. sense you're not confident in that and you've probably done this before with other players in bracket and you just run over that decision making process. Yep, he's able to get that four, uh, fair. No, I really like that little reset with WB as well because he's mm -hmm. able to force this little spot where he's able to get those nice frame traps. Got all that extra damage too. Finally, not able, not closing it out just yet, but Cola is in such a good position. This is kind of what I liked earlier where you're able to just stay out of the effective range of Sakana and able to bully him from there. The up B finally closes out the stock, but... Yeah, the amount of work he had to do just to take that one stock as Bowser? Yeah. That's uh, not a good sign that things are going well. No, I was going to say also the percent that you had to close the stock out at against a Roy as Bowser, it's... Ooh. A little spicy, but you know what? Down 2 0 is like a little time to get spicy, so why not? And so it was the beautiful call out on the aerial drift, though. Like, Sakana's been very consistently trying to regain stage control in the same way. Well, uh, maybe chose to like let it go earlier. Maybe he didn't, but either way, he decided to take advantage of it when he knew it would take a stock, so that's what matters. And. I like Sakana's use of the fire breath there into holding the shield. It's almost got any punish again, but now Sakana playing well and evens up the stock count. This is a great position for Sakana to be in. No, I think this matchup is very even, more likely than not. It's just. Polo's just been playing better for the Ooh. most part. Ooh. Now, if he shielded there, that was it. Yeah, that was the game right there. Not quite enough yet, but Cola piling on the damage. 119 for Sakana. I think that's it? Nope. Nope. It's Rage it's in the bank. That's it. And again, Sakana trying to take stage control aggressively, and Cola is right there to call it out. No. Either way, good stuff from Cola. Securing a top eight spot where he's going to be playing Vendetta. It looks like uh, we're probably going to get DD versus Jank Trees next. So that's an interesting okay. matchup. I always, so when I first started Ultimate, the person who 
kind of taught me this game was a Yoshi player. Right. So I have a soft spot for Yoshi. It, I just wonder what DD is going to play. Yeah. Because it feels like such an enigma. It's either going to be the Steve. There's a very, very minor off chance that you could see the Pac-Man. <laughs> but PT is always something that you're thinking about as well with DD. What seems like the most likely option is probably Steve against Yoshi, I would think. Pro 